Oh, I'm so thankful to be in the land of the living today. I'm so thankful that things are working together for my good. I'm so thankful that I love the Lord. I'm thankful, hallelujah, for another opportunity to give God some glory and to give him some praise. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Truly, I will rejoice and be glad in it. We just like to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you all to a time of reflection with New Destiny Ministries where we are empowering souls for destiny. How many know we have a destiny? Ah, glory to God. And we have grace and favor on our lives because we serve the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God that can't fail, won't fail, and will never fail. Amen. We serve a God that can't lie. Amen. Every promise that he has in this word, from Genesis to Revelation, it won't be altered, it won't be changed, and he will fulfill it. Amen. Amen. We're just so blessed today. I tell you, I thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for Sister Ruby being with us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for just being here with us to celebrate what God is doing. Truly, we thank God for each one of you. We have a special treat today, and I'm excited. Woo, God. I'm excited. You know what excites me? When you can love people genuinely, and there's never no mess, there's never no chaos, there's never no confusion, there's never no gossip, there's never no backbiting. How many would love to meet people like that? And people that you can cherish and love on, and you can do it with a pure heart, a sincere heart. Well, our special guest today, she's not a guest, but she's very special, amen, and we have come to love her, so I tell you, but we're going to get get right on to, into what God has for us, but we're going to ask our practice, uh Vanessa Gambrell, to open up with the word of prayer for us on today, and we're going to get right on into the segment, because I'm excited about this topic to, this week, healing for our issues. How many need some healing? Amen. And don't ever say, you know, don't ever say, I don't have any issues. Every day you wake up, there's going to be some issues for you to deal with. If it's no more than having to get out the bed and comb your hair, hallelujah, sometimes that becomes an issue because you're, you're trying to figure out what kind of way I'm going to do my hair today. Amen. Sometimes when you get out the bed, you done slept crazy and you might have a crook in your neck. That's an issue for today. Amen. So we're dealing with healing for our issues. Many times we, you know, life is what it is. And we're going to always have some issues when it's when it's pertaining to life, if it's dealing with our family, if it's dealing with our children, dealing with the church, dealing with things that's happening in our community, in our nation as a whole, guess what? Those are issues, everyday issues that we, everyday challenges that whether we like it or not, we have to deal with them. Amen. So we're just excited about Mother being with us today. And, again, I have Prophetess Gambrell's line open. We're going to ask her to open up with prayer, and then we're going on from there. God bless you, Prophetess Gambrell. How are you today? I'm good. God bless everybody. Glad to be here today. Dear Heavenly Amen. Father, in the name of God, first of all, we want to come to you with thanksgiving, God, giving you the thanks for everything that you have done, God, even the things that you have not done, God. We're thanking you in advance, God, for you know what every one of our needs are, God. You said that you were supplied for every need that we have, God. So we give you the thanks and we give you the praise and we give you the glory on today, God, for the things that you are taking care of concerning us, God. And right now, God, I ask you as the speaker, mm. speak today, God. 
open up our ears, God, that not only do we hear, but we hearken to the words that take place, God. God, I'm asking surgery on our hearts, God, that every issue, every issue, every issue that is in our heart, God, that it be surgically removed on today. As the words go forth, God, that it'll be a bone that be applied and it be healed. Every wound, every scar, everything that separates us from you, God, that uh, causes that. Thank you, God. God. That we deal with them as the word come forth out of your servant on the day that we are yield to what you are saying and we'll say yes and we'll be mended in the midst of it in love and peace. And harmony and unity ah, as Jesus. body in Christ in the kingdom that we shall be helpers of each other and love one mm. another, and each other up and encourage one another. God, I yes, pray God. this for my speak this for for the day that this show take place as the word goes forth and proceeded out of your servant's mouth, God, that it be applied where it needs to be applied in the Thank things that you do. For the wayside in the name of Jesus, that no offense would take place. Nothing that hinders the word that came forth on the day, but it shall accomplish what it goes forth to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Truly, again, we're excited about Mother being on the line with us. And as I'm looking at the switchboard, I see some hope. Oh, some natives of Oakland, Pastor Beatrice Morton, so good to see you on the line today. Sister T, amen, good to see her. She's out of Oakland, amen. Sister Ruby is right there in Stockton, California. So we have some Californians on this line today, Mother Richard, and we thank God for Mother Charity being with us today, God. Thank God for our co-host, Sister Ruby. Amen. We're just so excited. Amen. Amen. And I called Mother early this morning. I've been meaning to call her, but this morning as I was driving, heading up to my mother's house, God put Mother in my spirit, and it was, uh, you know, I, I, I'm still dealing with this time, this time zone. I haven't got acclimated to this time zone yet. So it was about something to nine this morning, which meant that it was all uh, going on seven o'clock there in uh, uh, Oakland, California. So I said, "Well, Mother gets up early. I just I'm gonna just call this number while she's on my mind and invited Mother to come on and speak for us today. And I tell you, she's a woman of wisdom. She's a woman of knowledge. She's a woman that loves God. Amen. She's a mother." Amen. I think of about 14 children. Amen. A grandmother. Amen. And she has just been an encourager. She has been someone that we can call on and we can counsel with, and she would give us wisdom and give us godly instructions. Amen. And anybody should appreciate a mother and a grandmother of this nature. Amen. We met Mother over on the uh, Circle of Love broadcast where I first heard about this blog talk radio over three years ago. Amen. Almost three years ago. Amen. And she just has been a Jew. Amen. We've been at a mother's home in uh, Oakland, California, and have been there to eat with her and sup with her. And I tell you, she's just genuine and she's pure and she's sincere about her walk with God. She's in, she's sincere about kingdom work. Amen. She also hosted a broadcast called Grandma's Touch on, uh, was it Grandma's Touch, Mother, or Grandma's Hand? No, Grandma's Touch. Grandma's Touch with yeah. the Circle of Love, and they have, uh, uh, they have dismantled that uh, blog talk radio, so they're no longer on. Amen. But Mother is still in our heart, and we certainly appreciate her and appreciate her making the sacrifice to come and minister the word to us on today. So with no further ado, we'd like to present to some and introduce to others our mother, mother, Mother Mildred Richard of Oakland, California. God bless you, Mother. And God bless you, and I thank you for your inviting me today to speak to the audience and to give me this privilege again. I appreciate it. I thank God that I'm I'm honored to be able to be with you all. The fellowship is so wonderful. 
And I, I just give God the glory and the honor for all that he do for me. You know, the scripture tells us that we, our gifts will make room for us. And so I'm thanking God because when God has a, a time for you, he will touch someone's heart and say, okay, ask them, call them, because he's making room. And I'm grateful mm-hmm. for that because when we let the Lord direct us, everything works according to the will of God. So I give honor to God today and to each one of you that's listening, you're precious in the sight of God. And God loves his people because he created us in, in his image. Really? And he wants us to do his will. And we say that we are Christians and that we are soldiers of the cross. We need to walk in that manner. We need to do what God has called us to do. And i just like to say a little prayer before I get started because I have to depend on God. I can't just say what I know. I, I know certain scriptures. I want God to, to speak because his word does not go out void and return back to him except he to accomplish what it went out there for. So I'm hoping that I can encourage someone today to even stand still or to go forward or to do whatever God has called them to do. So, Father, in the name of your son Jesus, I'm asking you to increase our faith as we read your word, as we study your word. Give us a love for your word that we may walk in truth and that we may be free in the name of Jesus from all issues of life. They are burning us down. They will cause us to be weak and cause us to think wrong. But because you gave your life, Jesus, that we may be free in the spirit, we can live and not worry. We can run and not be weary. And we just thank you for everything. We give you glory and honor. And we want to lift up your name in the name of Jesus that you may provide for us the nourishment we need today in this service. And we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And we're talking today about healing from our issues. You know, everybody have issues one way or the other from one thing or the other. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life. I don't want you to have issues. I want you to have life, and I want you to be free in your spirit, that you can keep your mind on me, and I'll keep you in perfect peace. I don't, You don't need issues burdening you down. We're going to have them, but they don't have to burden you down. They don't have to cause you to backslide. You don't have to be burdened with carrying them around. And some people get so balled up in issues, they become weak. They get out the will of God, and then they start complaining, complaining, and everybody hears them say, oh, I want to hear that today. I don't heard that so much. So the Lord is saying, you need a healing. You need to be healed. But when we get weak in the faith, we don't read our Bibles like we should, we, and we running with people that gossip a lot, we have a tendency to gossip too. That's how the Lord tells us we need to watch our company. Bad company will destroy all your good manners. You're running with them long enough. Go ahead, Bad mother. Company. People who gossip a lot. I tell you about another person and have you hating them. You don't even know their name. That is not the will of God. I know Proverbs 3 and 30 says, Strive not with a man without a cause. Sometimes you don't even have a cause to hate anybody. You're just going by what somebody said. You got mm-hmm. an issue, honey. You need to be healed from that. you sick. That's not God's will. He came that we may have life. Not try to kill somebody. He says, strive not with a man without a cause if he have done thee no wrong. And you see this all the time. People go and say, you know what? I heard that she or he did this or he did that. No, you you need to hear what the Spirit is saying to you because you are the church. You need to hear what the Spirit is saying from the Word of God, not what somebody is telling you about another sister or brother. And then you t- you're weak enough to take that situation, all that gossip you heard, and spread it out there and cause other people to hate that person 
They don't even know them. They don't know anything right. about them. But mm. the Bible says if we're going to be healed, we need to be healed from all that foolishness. That's just Come a on. lot of foolishness, and we need to be healed. And we go around telling people we love the Lord. I got a mighty burning fire. You better watch out for that mighty burning fire. It'll burn up everything you have. You need oh. the fire like a burning fire. You need something, that spiritual fire from heaven that God gives oh. us. The last thing that left heaven was the Holy Spirit. You need that. That's the kind of fire you need. Shut up in your bones that when you say I'm not going to do it, you can't help it. you got to go do it. Yeah, I don't want to mm-hmm. talk to them, but that mighty burning fire says, yeah, you go. You go talk to them. I don't want to love them. That fire inside of you that came from heaven says, yes, go, because that's what Jesus would do. But that other mm-hmm. fire would tell you, oh, hate them, and tell everybody else you know to hate them. That's, that is your need to be healed. You need to be healed from that. Let me tell you something. There was a man, there was a man named King David in the Bible. He had an issue. That man loved women. That man loved women. But his issue this particular time was he saw another man's wife bathing, and he liked what he saw. He had 300 concubine women waiting to be married to him, and 700 women that he was already married to, the brother had a problem. That brother had a problem. Being king, he could do that. But he had an issue that needed to be healed. And when he took the man's wife and had a child by her, by her, and had her husband killed, that brother needed to be healed. He my had mom. an issue that needed to be healed. But, oh, God saw it. You can't get mm. away from God. He said, my eye is in every place. I see the good and I see the bad. You can't get away from God because he's everywhere. He said that issue right there need to be healed. He's a leader. And the leaders of my people sometimes call them to error. He is wrong. So God sent a prophet to him and told him about his evil work. Don't you know Isaiah said, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion and show my people a transgression. Point it out to them. And point it out to the house of Israel. Don't you know that sin goes on if we don't point it out? We make people believe they're doing okay, and we know they're dead wrong when we don't say anything to them about their sin. People in leadership need to be able to have a life that shines out, that God respects, that God honors, and they can stand up with our folks knowing about their evil works in their lives and being hypocritical and declare that God said, you need to come out of that corner because you can't hide and get rid of that issue that you have. Don't you know, if the, the Bible tells us that we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Don't try to please these people. They need the same thing you need, a little more Jesus. That's what they need. They need the same thing you need, but we try to please people. We want people to give us honor. We want them to pat us on our back and tell us we're doing all right. You can't do nothing without Christ. You can't do nothing without the Lord. If it was not for the Lord loving you, you couldn't even raise your hand. You couldn't even move your foot. So you need to, we need to get rid of all these issues. That's why I ask God, help me, Lord. I don't want to teach something I don't live. I don't want to say things that's not real. Help me. I, I cry out all the time. If it's me, fix me. I want God to have me in the right place, saying the right thing at all times, because i got to give an account to the Lord myself. And when these messages come about, they start with the messenger. Then it goes out to the other people. We should be anointed enough to teach God's word, and nobody can come and say, Ooh, no, I saw them do this, and I saw them do that. If it's a lie, it won't stand. And you can hold your head up and walk right through them demons if they're lying on you. But if that's the truth, you hang your head every time. We don't need that. God gave us a spirit of love and not fear. And we can, and he gives us holy boldness. When he gives us a job to do, he gives us holy boldness. Go and do this job and do it this way. And I tell you, God will bless us. We, we don't need all these issues. What we need is faith 
in God. You know, I had uh, uh, some people, they don't seem to be able to catch it. You can teach and teach and teach, and some folks don't seem like they can get it at all. Sit up under the word year after year after year, and they don't seem to get it because they don't change. You know what's happening? Their mind is not there. They think it way somewhere else while the word of God is going forth. And they don't catch it. It's passing right on by them. And they go home the same way they came. They don't know anything. Woo, we have a time today. What do you preach about? I don't know. But it sure was good. How you know something is good and you ain't never tasted it, tested it, tried it, or anything? We need to get rid of these issues. The Lord said, cast all your cares on me. But I care about you. Now, I love you enough to do whatever you ask me to do, and I will, because he's not a man that he should lie. He will, if he promises us something, he certainly will do it. We don't need all these issues in our lives. Sometimes we're so, so, so worried about other people. People come in, and they look nice, they smell good, and they're trying to get in the service, and we talk about trying to look at that hat. You got an issue, honey. You need to be healed. Child, I wouldn't wear that. I wouldn't, and you looking terrible, more worse than the person you're talking about. People talk and gossip right in the pews when God is not talking to them sinners on the street. When he gives us instruction, he's talking to the church. Be Why? Because he loves us. He's correcting us. It's just like in the home. When the mother and father is correcting their children, they're not talking to the neighbor next door. They're talking to your to their children, I don't want you to do this, and I don't want you to do that. I want you to hear what I'm saying to you and obey me. Well, the scripture says, if you live godly, you shall suffer. People, oh, yeah, it's coming. Live godly. Get rid of sin. Get rid of hatred. Get rid of jealousy, because jealousy is cruel as the grave. When people are jealous of you, they can't treat you right. They got an issue. They got an issue. They can't treat you right. They can't even, they'll lie to you every time I love you and know they hate you. But you know what? They need to be healed. That's healing in the word of God. That's deliverance in the word of God. That's peace in the word of God. He said, if you keep your mind on me, get off of them people's clothes. Get off of their, their husband and wife because they're living good and they're getting along. The devil wants to tear that up, and he got some folks he can send and almost tear down. But we have to be strong enough to stand on the word of God that the enemy cannot touch us. We have to stand. We have to be covered by the blood. And then his anointing will come in and destroy everything that's trying to tear down what God has built up. The Bible done told us, don't strive with people without a call. You've got no business calling them people. You don't have no business getting into their business, talking about them, wondering how they do things and how you do that. Let me tell you something. Faith is all we need. Faith in God is all we need. I wanted a new car last month. And I would get up in the morning after I prayed. I would get up in the morning and go look out into my driveway. And my daughter said, Mother, what is wrong with you? Why do you keep doing that? I said, Honey, I'm looking for a new car. She said, You got to be kidding. I'm looking for a new car. I'm just exercising my faith. Because the Lord said, If your ways please me, I will give you the desire of your heart. I'm on, I, want a new car. I said, My car's too old. I had an accident in my car and my nice Lincoln Continental. I love that car. I had an accident in it, tore it up, tore it out. And I said, well, I need another new car. But I didn't get one right away. I went and bought a small little Toyota, and it it gave me such good service, and it was just such a nice little car. I loved it. But then it was a used car, and I said, I want me a new car. I just want it. And the Lord said, I give you the desires of your heart if your ways please me. So every morning I'd exercise my faith. I'd just get up and look in my driveway. And my daughter kept saying, Mother, what's wrong with you? I said, Tyler, I'm exercising my faith. I'm looking for a brand new car. Three weeks later, a bank Hold sent on. me a, a paper in the mail said, you have been approved for a $30,000 car. Been approved. Just bring the letter in. Yeah, and God. I said to my son, I said, you believe this kind of stuff? He said, go see. Then you find out if they're lying or not. 
I said, I believe God is going to put me in a new car. He said, well, go see. I'll go with you because I want to see if they lying too. We went to the new, the, the new car lot. I presented the letter to the man. He said, oh, you've been approved. This is one of our letters. I said, okay. He said, well, <laughs> we, you, you can be approved up to a $30,000 car. I said, sir, I'm a widow woman. Don't take me that high. Bring it back oh, down. Yeah. And I said, uh, what about that twenty or 15000 He said, we got new cars for that, too. I said, it's just me, and all I need is transportation. I tell you, we went out there and we looked. He said, I said, let me test drive this one right here. Test drive it. I liked it. And the man said, it's yours. You can drive it home. And I said, well, I don't have a down payment right now. And my son said, well, how much down payment do she have to have? He said, well, if she got $500, he said, I got that in my pocket right now. My son put the $500 down. I said, well, I have okay. some at home, but I'll have to go home and get mine and bring it back. He said, that's okay. You can do it like that. Honey, I drove a new car home to get the rest of the money and been <laughs> driving it ever since. He says, your oh, ways please me. Get rid of those issues. Get yourself healed. Ask God to create in you a new heart and renew a right spirit within you and then test it out to see if it works. I, re- I, I tested out that faith in God, and I'm driving a brand new car right now. You don't need all of that, those issues, all those bad thoughts and old evil mind and being jealous of people and you know, other people being this gossiping and going on. What you need is faith in God. Without uh-huh. faith, it's impossible to please God. We have to have faith in God. Don't you know, even if you make a mistake, Jesus created us, God created us in his image and in his likeness. And then Jesus loved us enough to die for us and pay for all the wrongdoings we had done. What are you, you laying, and laying it up there for? Use it. That's like money you have and you don't even use it and you eat out somebody's garbage can. What good is it? Use what God has given you. He gave you faith, and he said, you don't need a whole lot of it. I'm going to give you a little bit. You use it, it'll work for you. That's all you need is just a little bit of faith. And we, you know what? When we seek God, ask him for what we want. We know we're going to suffer. We know the devil is after us. He don't want us to grow stronger. He don't want us to do all these different things, to live right and being blessed of the Lord. He don't want that. He doesn't want it. We know his his worst. When he come after us, we know that he is after us trying to tear down what God has built up. And you know what Jeremiah said in the third chapter in the fourteenth verse? He said, Turn old backsliding children to the Lord. If you've done wrong, it's not over. If you made a mistake, it's not over. You've been jealous, it's not the end of the life or end of the world. Turn do like John the Baptist said, repent, 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 and come on back to the Lord. He's married to you. All you have to do is come on back to the Lord, ask him to forgive you, renew a right spirit, and do you know what? He'll accept you. His hands are outstretched all day long. He will accept you. He says, for I am married unto you, and I will talk. Take you one of a city. I'll take you like a whole city or two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, bring you back to the church. He'll take you, if it's a whole nation of people who want to come back to God, he said, I'll take you that way. If it's just two of y'all in a family and both of y'all want to come to me, I'll take it that way. If it's just one and, and then you're holding up your hands, say, Lord, help me. He said, I'll do it that way. Just come on back, repent. But... When you repent and ask God to forgive you, in your heart and in your mind, in your thoughts, you should be saying, I don't ever want to do that again. Because that's repentance, begotly sorrow that you did anything wrong. And the whole world have been wrong. We all have been wrong. And we have to repent and ask God to forgive us and accept us into the family of faith. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, hey, turn around. I, you know what? Everybody needs a job if they want to have something in life because ain't nobody going to give you anything. They don't owe you anything. So at one, t- at one time I was so broke and needed a job. I said, Lord, I need a job. I need a job. And a lady woke me up early one morning at 5 o'clock. She said, did I hear you say you wanted a job? 
I say, ooh, yes, I do. She said, get up and go with me. A lady quit yesterday. See, and if you really want something, God will open up a way for you. He'll open up a door for you. I went there and worked 12 years on that job. The man didn't even fire me. He came in. He said, who is this? She said, oh, this is a lady that I brought for a job because yesterday, you know, that lady quit. And he said, yeah, I need somebody. Do she, is she experienced? He said, let me, she said, let me show you. We had been there two hours working, and so I could catch on. And by the time he, the man came in, we was, had so much work going on. He said, well, she looked like she'd do it okay. I stayed there 12 years. I'd never even seen inside that place before. God will open up a door. He will get open up your understanding and let you understand how to do things. If you are willing and obedient, you don't need to carry around all these dead issues. You don't need to do that. You don't, and then peace, sometimes you don't suffer and suffered and suffered and went through, and God is blessing you for your faithfulness and for your suffering and your obedience, and then people get jealous, and they give you a bad time. They'll strive with you for no reason whatsoever. They want you to give up. The devil had told them, go get them. Go get them. They're getting too close to God. They're getting too powerful. They're getting too strong. They're too blessed. Go get And them people will come direct to the church. They'll sit in the audience, roll their eyes at you, look at you funny, and you say, what's the matter? Oh, no, you know, I love you. We need to get rid of all that stuff. We need to go back to the old landmark and be real for Jesus. We need to seek his faith until we know we heard and found him. We need to do the will of God. This world is left in the hands of the church. And if the church has lost its saving power, what good are we? We don't need these issues of life. We need oh, Jesus. Jesus. We need Jesus. We need to go through. We need to bow our knees. We need to find Christ in our heart, and we need to love him and love one another. We can take the city. We can take the city as Christians. We can take the city. We can love the Lord with all our heart. Do you know some people don't even study the word of God? The Bible done told us, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Do you know Jesus had 12 disciples? They were grown men with families. But he had to teach them how to follow him. They didn't know anything about following Jesus and how to do Peter. Let them let them know, I'll fight and cuss in a minute. Yeah, but I love Jesus. Well, that's the way some of us is. But, hey, Jesus told Peter, go to the upper room and stay there until you be endured with power. That's what the church needs now is power. We don't need to just do things because we know how to do it. We don't need to be on program because we know the formality. We need to have power to do it. We need to be anointed to do it. We need to be able to do it so other people desire to serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. We need we need that power. We need that joy. We need joy running over. We need our, our souls and our hearts full of joy. The joy of the Lord is the strength of the saints. We need that strength. We need it. We need the Lord to, to uh, give us holy boldness so we can speak the words of the Lord and do God's will. We don't need to be in all this foolishness going on. Let me tell you, some people don't even know how to seek the Lord for what they want. They think they can do anything and then go to heaven. Oh, yeah, you can go there, but are you going to stay? He going to put up with that foolishness? No, if we really love the Lord like we said, Jesus said, if you love me, you're saying you're a Christian, you're saying you love me. If you love me, get rid of them issues. Cast all your cares on me. Give them to me. Let me handle them. And I want you to be free. I want you, and this is why he wants us to be free. He said, be ye therefore, Ephesians 5 and 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. How are you going to follow him raising all that hell, all that gossip, all that un- ungodly stuff? He don't want that. He's not going to have it. He's not going to have it. You're not doing anything for him. That's why he said in the day when judgment, people are going to say, well, Lord, I did this in your name. I healed the sick and I prayed and this and that. He said, I don't know anything about that. Mm-hmm. You might have did it, but it would, I, it, you didn't do it to me because I didn't accept it. 
I didn't accept that. That stuff you was doing, it stuck in my nostrils. I don't want to have anything to do with it. You didn't walk as a dear child. You were out there on your own. And then it says, and walk in love. Why do he say walk in love? You know why? Because God himself is love. That's all he is, a whole lot of love. You don't have love, you don't have God. If you have love in your heart, then you've got God in there, and he's directing you in the right path. He'll direct you, lead you, he'll guide you in all truth and righteousness. And you won't carry all those heavy burdens. He said, get rid of them heavy burdens. Give them to me and take mine up on you because my burdens are light. My burdens won't weight you down. They, they're not too heavy. He said, why don't you walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering. He gave himself as an offering for us. He paid the price for us to live holy. And he was a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. You know what? You can go to church sometime and you smell good and people are, I don't know why they wear that perfume. People are so ignorant, but when they can afford to wear perfume, they don't want you to say anything about it. When I said, the Bible said do everything decent and in order. Don't put on so much that you drive folk way back away from you. Wear it in modest up here. Put it on modest where it just, you just smell nice among yourself to your husband and to yourself and to your family. Don't wear it too heavy. Do everything decent and in order. Wear it modest. And then it says in the third verse, but, now listen to this now, there's a but, and any time you get your butt out the way, it's going to be all right for Christ. It says, but fornication, you hear that? Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as okay. becoming saints. Saints don't do that. Ain't no booty calls for saints. It ain't mm. no shacking up for saints. He Come on, all of that. That's a, that's, that's a weight. That is an issue. And we have so much of it going on now, and people don't want to say anything about it. But Isaiah said, you better lift up your voice like a trumpet. That trumpet is loud sound. It'll wake up the dead. Ooh. Lift your voice up and tell them people they're wrong. Tell them in love. You don't have to beat them over the head. You say, that's not God's will. That's not scripture. Jesus told that woman at the well she was wrong, and he, she accepted it and, and went and set this whole city on, tell, told the whole city about it. And those oh. people had to run, come see a man that told her everything she had done. See, you, you can get the word over to people once you make a change. Can't you hear the Spirit say, make a change? Can't you hear the Lord talking to you, saying you're a Christian? Can't you hear that? Make a change. Make a change. Make a change. Get rid of all of that baggage. Get rid of all those issues. Get rid of it. And let God clean you up. Number four, in, Isaac, in Ecclesiastes, I mean, uh, in Ephesians 5 and 4, it says, neither filterness. Sometimes people can think ugly, think evil. Oh, filthy imagination, thinking all that filthiness, not foolish talking. Sometimes people just talk crazy. Say, Girl, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm talking about this and that. Uh, that's a bunch of foolishness. Let it go. It doesn't let mean that. We shouldn't we should even let that kind of stuff come out of our mouth. Not foolish Ooh. talking, not jesting, telling old jokes. And are not convenient. That's not convenient, but rather giving off thanks. For this you know, that no homemonger, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an adulterer has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Don't say you can do all that mess and go to heaven. You go there, but honey, he'll put chains on you and throw you into the lake of fire. Once you stand before that judgment and he don't find your name in the book of life, you're in trouble. This is our dressing up room. This is our school room. This is our preparation room. We need to get it together now so we can be ready when he comes. Because he said he's coming like a thief in the night. We ain't going to have Come time on. to get ready. We're not going to have time to ask somebody to forgive us. We're not going to have time Ooh. to get it together. We have to do this day by day. Because why? This is real. 
<clears throat> the word of God is powerful. It's quick yeah. and it's sharp. It'll tear you up if you ain't living right. We need to get rid of all that stuff. And some people try to be slick. The devil, he, they let the devil just use them any kind of way to find out somebody's business and go tell it to somebody else. Oh, come on. Why would you do that to your sister? Why would you do that to your brother? We all going to, if we make it to heaven, we all, all going to be there. And it's going to be, everybody going to be there standing on their own, giving account of their deeds done in their body. And if you miss out, it's going to be a mess. You're going to be in trouble with God. And honey, if you're in trouble with God, can't nobody deliver you out of it. And let me tell you, if you want to be blessed, the Lord said, all you have to do is let your ways please me. Don't commit adultery, don't lie, don't steal, and all this other stuff. And stay, stay, stay away from gossip and, and jealousy and envy and strife. Get rid of that's the devil's package. That's his insurance for you. God's insurance is life and it more abundantly. God pays in dividends. He gives you something that makes you happy. He said his blessings make him rich and adds no sorrow. Why wouldn't you want to choose him? Why wouldn't you want to choose him? He'll bless you, honey. He can bless you anywhere you go. He can yeah. take you from the cotton field and put you in a white house. And I'm telling you, God, why not choose him? He done paid the price for you. He mm. And when he gives you a gift, use it to the glory and honor of God. Even mm. if people are jealous of you and they, they try to push you around, Stand on God's words. I know God said he's a very present help in trouble. I know he's coming to my aid. I know he said he don't want me broke all the time and living from pillar to post. He said all the silver and gold is mine, all of it. I don't Mm. care where you go, even the money you don't even understand. You don't know what the volume of it is. He said that's still my money. Oh, that's mine. All the silver and gold is mine. Now, if you broke and need some money, ask God. Cast all your cares on him. Why get jealous because somebody else done suffered, cried all night long, done suffered for years, and God bless them for their faith. Now you want to go tear them down by talking about them. Come on, that's not the way saints do things. We need to be healed. Honey, you sick. You sick. I don't care if it's a man, woman, boy, or girl. We need to be healed from that foolishness. That is not God. You cannot grow. In the Lord, you just there messing around. You just there on program. You just there doing something because you know how it's done. But you're not progressing. You're not progressing. That, that, no, that gift is not being used. That God, it just laying dormant. We need Jesus, and we need Him now. We don't know when death is gonna come. We don't know how long we have Him. Let's do it now. Don't put off tomorrow what you need to do today. Let God bless you. Worry about yourself. Get yourself together. Lord, help me. We used to sing a song years ago in the church, help me, help me, help me, Lord. And we just keep saying that same thing, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. We say it until we felt his help. And he helped us to overcome issues in our lives until we were healed from all ungodliness, until we could pray and he could hear our and answer our prayers. We prayed unto the Lord, and God gave us the victory. He gave us the victory, and I love him, I appreciate him, and I thank God today that I stay with God. Oh, when I made a mistake, we ain't none of us perfect, honey. Cause we have lived, we try to be perfected in everything we do. But then you make a mistake, you better ask God to forgive you. And keep on moving. There is life after everything. There's life after mistakes. There's life after death. There's life after being broke. There's life after losing something you need to work hard for. Keep moving. Do not stop. That's what the devil wants you to do. Stop along the way and give up. Don't ever give up the Lord's breath is in your body because the Lord says if you fall, a righteous person falls seven times, he will pick you up. If you're righteous, you're calling on the name of the Lord, and you stumble and fall, he says, I'll pick you up. I'm not going to let you lay there. You belong to me. And he says, whatsoever you do to my little ones, you've done that to me. So we have to be careful how we treat one another. Get rid of your issues and start coming up against a person without an, oh, you don't have nothing to go on 
messing with that person, putting their name on the highway, causing confusion in people's homes, get rid of it. You're doing that without a cause. Get rid of it because God is watching you, and everything you do is going, you have to pay for. If your name, if, you, if your good don't all outweigh your bad, honey, you're going to be sad, so sad. I love the Lord. I want to thank you, uh, Sister uh, Bernard, for calling me and asking me to participate today and fellowship with the people of God. God loves all of us. We need to love one another as the Lord has loved us, and we need to pray one for the other. If we can all, everybody have problems, but when we pray, God will lift it up. God will rise and bring us up higher, and we need to keep going in the name of Jesus. So God bless you. At this time, I'm going to turn it back into your hand, and may God truly bless each one that listens today. God bless you. <laughs> 